Oh, wow, Mike, this frame reinforcement is pretty beefy. Why do we need to reinforce the frame? Because these pickup trucks were never meant for this type of leverage. So the best thing we can do for our clients is to make sure that we do everything, you know, our due diligence to make sure that they don't have problems later. So the main key to this ingredient is just a lot of labor, elbow grease, and uh, trying to make sure that these beds won't separate on the cab. We send these trucks out for the plate on the side, on the top, on the bottom, just all the way around, everywhere that we can get it just to make sure that they don't have any problems. That's the importance of this application. It's cheaper in the long run, definitely, to go through this process and take the extra precautions to reinforce the frame, to get the suspension correct. This just means longevity for the customer in the application. These trucks are capable of making two, three hundred thousand per year every year. With this little bit of maintenance that they require, it's a no-brainer. Makes the truck ride better, makes the truck stronger. Everything is a win-win situation. Now that our little Herc's done, what's the next step? Next step now, we got to get our pads in here and then we can get it into the frame rails of the truck. These sometimes are a little tight. And then we can wall her in. have a spacer in here so when the, we weld it on the heat don't suck it in but that mounts into the factory holes down here Now that we got the unit welded onto the frame of the truck, we still have our cross member in. Um, now we got our mag drill. We're gonna drill four holes in the frame, two on this, two on this bar, and then that'll secure the unit from moving around, and then we can cut this out. So let's drill. Now that we got the four bolts into the frame, now we can take our cutoff wheel and cut our cross member bar out. Always ready roadside services, F-250 loaded up, just going home, ready to make some money. Got a little hurt, 2.0 tucked up in the back. Yeah, 
front. Looking mean up there. Thank you again. Always ready roadside services from Pennsylvania for the business. Hope you enjoy the little herc. So hey Mike, I'm new to the industry. I want to put a little herc on a truck. What kind of truck should I get? It depends on the preference. My first question for the customer would be, what is the purpose of the truck? Is it going to be a work truck? Is it going to be a, a personal truck? You know, if you're going to have a, a straight work truck, then I think a dually would be a workhorse. I think if you're going to get a personal truck, I suggest having a crew cab, short bed, single wheel, diesel, because now it can be much more versatile. It can be a personal truck, record truck, fifth wheel gooseneck truck. It's so many trucks all in one. When you have the one insurance payment, one truck payment, and it does all these things, how do you lose? You don't, you, you just win. And not only considering that insuring the truck versus you know uh, a F350 versus a F550, one, I'm sure the premium is gonna be a big difference. Um, but for the most part, all trucks that you want to utilize must have a 10,000 GVWR minimum, which that excludes all Ram 2500s. Some people don't want a diesel, I get it. I prefer that you have it. If you want a gas front end, that's fine. We just need to have an honest conversation of what are your expectations? Because once you overload this truck, one is going to handle far better than the other between gas and diesel. You know, and a lot of people don't ever intend to over a truck. That's everybody's intentions. No, I'm not going to do it. That's not what I'm going to do, but that's not life. And that's what happens all the time. They overload it, things happen. And again, that diesel is going to help out tremendously more. The fact that the truck is going to ride so good with those Fox shocks and that custom helper spring system really means that a brand new truck versus a truck that we've installed our unit on, our truck rides better because there's weight in the back. At that point, when you factor in the Fox shocks, the weight in the back, this thing really absorbs the road and the potholes here in Detroit quite well. One of the things that we're really proud of is it doesn't shake and rattle. You know, there's rubber stops that when the unit goes up all the way, it smashes into these rubber boots and really gives a uh, solid ride without a bunch of clickety clackety clanging. Our equipment is tight. There are very few rattles. We try to get rid of all of them, but we can't, but significantly different in road noise in comparison to other applications. And aside from that, I feel that, that uh, depending on who you're asking and what their needs and capabilities are, uh, most people are, are gonna choose the single wheel truck because they have the ability to be more versatile. But again, there are the preference of would rather have the four wheels in the back and that's fine. I agree with you. Initially when we started doing this 15 years ago, that was my inclination too, but you really do lose the versatility of, you know, taking the wife out to eat, the kids, going through the car wash, you know, all these things can be done with the single wheel. It can't be done with the dually, you know, not making three point turns in the parking lot. These are, you know, things that really make a difference in day to day life with these units in this application. All right, shock's going on. So what are you doing right there? Right now, I am just getting the measurement of the stroke because I have to install this at 24 inches per this application of this truck. Alrighty, now that we got a new shock mount installed onto the truck, we are going to install the shock. So I always leave the strap on the shock, it makes it a little easier. Get your bottom bolt in. Okay. So then you just take that, pop it on there, boom, take a pair of cutters and cut that. Now that we have the shocks uh, bolted onto the truck, uh, now we're going to do some remounting of some electrical components. Uh, this is for the EGT and the exhaust. We have to weld this back on back here. Uh, the main harness will end up running down the driver's side and coming over. And there's a few plugs for the bumper and bed here as well as this EGT box. So, we take our little handy dandy marker, mark the holes. We got a holes marked and we're going to take two quarter inch bolts and weld them as studs in that location. 
So it'll hold the EGT box. Next day, where are we at? Well, update, we got the winch installed on here. Now we're just running the wires for the winch. Running power wires and so forth. We took the steel cable off the wrench and we are replacing it with a synthetic hunter footer. Um, these are great for not scratching up, you know, bumpers and so forth, and they're actually stronger. That, now that that's done, what's next? Now we have to get our power wires ready to run inside the bed for this wireless box because these ones are not long enough. Johnny's applying some undercoat to the frame. Got to leave some spots out. Get the helper pad so you can them back on. Make sure can over here. This is what we use for our coating. Some pretty good stuff. Every little herc will have an extra can of this included. Completed for now, we can put the bed back on. Let's get to it. Bed's going back on. Johnny's wiring up. We're plugging in some of the accessories and extra wires and power. And then zone. Finishing up these connections right here, getting the heat shrink on. And then we'll add them to our pump, and then we can install our pump into the toolbox. up the box on this uh, truck here and now we are installing the winch box into the rear of the pickup truck 
Uh, we got our three holes drilled for the mounting and then our main uh, wires come through this hole for the uh, wench box to use it manually. That goes like that and then we will screw our cover on as soon as we run our wires up from the winch and connect them in.